Let's add some more text. So I'm gonna go back to this info layer and I'm gonna clone some of this text here by holding Alt on my keyboard. And let's put some more contact info. It's good to let people know how to get a hold of you. And if you have a website, that's even better to put on your card. You could also put your Facebook page or your Twitter feed, you know, pretty much anything that you would use to contact people. Skype. I recommend if you have a really long, complicated website name like I do, and it's multiple words, you can use caps here because it doesn't matter if people type them in with the caps or without the caps, it's still going to go to your website. And I feel that it makes it easier to read. You don't have to put in the www and you don't have to put in the HTTP, semicolon, slash, slash, all that junk. It's, it's really up to you what you want to use here. You can go with something like that. Sometimes it just depends on your design. So I see that this is too big to fit within my safe area here. So we're gonna have to change the font size a bit to eight. Let's see if we can get away with nine. Nine will work. Put it maybe about here. Let's clone this again, holding Alt and Shift to keep it aligned while cloning. And let's put in some info about what we do, just so people get a good idea. If you have multiple mediums that you work in or you offer multiple services, put that kind of stuff in and then people will get just a quick glimpse into what you're capable of doing. I'm using the pipe characters here. You get them by holding shift and then hitting the backslash key to divide my little keywords here, but you could use anything you want really. You could use you know dashes if you want to. And a lot of the times I just do things by eye. I'm not gonna get too crazy about this amount of space here versus this amount of space here. If it looks good to me visually, I'm gonna have to say that that's probably good enough. I noticed that this line here isn't centered, so we're gonna center that. I'm gonna click on this line of text and then also hold control and click on the background layer. I'm gonna make sure that it's centered. Do the same thing with the info at the top. Make sure that's centered. And now I know for sure it's looking pretty good. I'll zoom out a little bit because you're gonna to wanna to look at your card at approximately the size that it's gonna be printed and that's going to vary depending on how close you are to your screen and what size your screen is. I'm working on a 47 inch HD TV, so everything generally looks really, really huge and I have to really like zoom out. I find that 25% to 15% somewhere in that range is generally if I hold a print up to the screen, that's about what size it is. But perceptually, I think 25% is a good view to look at something as it's going to print if you're working in 300 DPI. So that would be, in my opinion, a pretty satisfactory card. If you wanted to change the background, that's pretty easy to do. You can put in a piece of artwork if you wanted to, or you could just throw in a solid color. I recommend making a new layer and just calling it BG for background. And you can use the paint bucket to pick a color. It will use yellow and we run into a little issue here where this graphic has a white background. There's a few different ways we can get rid of that. We can try a blend mode of multiply, which works really well if the background's white. It pretty much makes the background go away. As we'll see if we move the moth layer up here. So it doesn't, it kind of almost looks like it's going behind the layer. So you get rid of that white background, whereas if we put it on normal, then you can see it covers everything up. So that's one way. If we don't want to use a blend mode to multiply, then we can do a secret trick here where we double click right in between where it says uh, the name of the layer and this little icon. If we drag this slider here, we can knock out some of the background. You basically just keep dragging till your background goes away. So what this is doing is it's essentially hiding everything that's white and so on up until this point. So if there's a lot of white in your image, that's going to disappear too. So you'll have to kind of watch out for that. Ideally, you want to use images that don't have backgrounds if you don't want the background to interfere with your layout. But in this case, that works. And if I wanted to do that with my logo too, I could do that. Just use a multiply blend mode. And now I have a nice yellow background for my card. Let's scoot this moth back somewhere. Looking at it kind of close and I'm seeing there's still some fringe on here. So I'm gonna go back in and so you can see it starts to remove the light color. So you have to kind of watch out. You can also try this trick here. I'm gonna set it back to normal. 
You can try to use the magic wand tool to do a selection and remove the background. What I recommend doing is instead of trying to delete the pixels, which you won't be able to do if you have a smart layer enabled here, is just use a mask. Just click on the mask here and go to invert here in your properties panel for your masks. And you'll have some varying success here. This doesn't work only because I put a drop shadow on my artwork. So ultimately what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to set the blend mode to multiply. Because I don't think that looks too bad. And this would look pretty cool. And if I wanted to change my background, rather than filling it again with the paint bucket tool, I recommend using a live effect here or color overlay. And if you click on the swatch here, you will get some different color options for your background. And then you can just kind of hunt and pick and find something that looks good. Looks kind of cool. Click OK. And there you go. You can see pretty easy to change the background. If we want to change the colors of our fonts, of course, you can just go to the swatch here when you have the font selected that you want to change. Let's say I want to change the color of my name here. You can change it to white. Or what can be faster sometimes is, again, to use one of these effects here, color overlay, pick something like white, but OK. And then if you right click on this layer now, you can go to copy layer style and that will copy this effect that you put on the layer. Then you can select all the other layers that you want to make white, right click on them and do paste layer style. And there you go. Maybe you want to put a drop shadow on some of this text to help it stand out. Double click on effects, add a drop shadow by clicking this checkbox, click on the drop shadow to change some of the settings. And again, if you want to copy the layer style by right clicking, you can do that. Select the multiple layers that you want to apply the style to, right click and do paste layer style. And there you go. Now, of course, I don't really like this background being orange. And now the drop shadow doesn't work at all, nor does the color overlay. So we'll just go ahead and just turn off the effects for all this and put it back to normal how we had it. Of course, you will want to make a backside for your card more than likely. So what I recommend doing is grouping together all of your layers from your front side because you could make two separate documents, but there's kind of really no reason to. It'll just be more of an effort for you to have to work between two documents. So I've got my front here. I can duplicate it by right clicking on it and go to duplicate group, call it back. I'm going to hide the front layer. So now we're only looking at the back and we want to get rid of some of this stuff here, like the logo and the moth. Maybe we don't want that on the back layer and just delete some more of this stuff here. Let's just keep my contact info just for example's sake. This will be our backside but you could really do whatever you want. You could have a piece of artwork or you could have some additional information. And we'll, let's just make it a different color. We'll go ahead and make it this orange color so we can distinguish between the two. So we've got our back side, got our front side. So now what you're gonna want to do is, as we were looking at earlier with our design specs, this particular printing service wants a TIFF, a JPEG, or an EPS. If you're working with vector art, which we're not in this case because we're working in Photoshop. We're not going to be exporting an EPS file. A JPEG would degrade the image quality a little bit and possibly change the colors, so we don't want to use a JPEG. So we're going to go with TIFF. That's the best option here. I use TIFF a lot for printing high-res artwork. So what you want to do is you want to hide and reveal this back and this front depending on what you want to save. Go to File and Save As. Select TIFF from the format. We don't want to save with layers, so uncheck this box. We're going to call it card front. I recommend not using spaces and using a hyphen if you're going to try to represent a space. Save this. Choose LZW compression. That'll just make the file smaller, but it's not going to hurt the image quality. And again, make sure that there's no layers. The rest of these settings you can just leave as they are and click OK. And now you have a file, a TIFF file that you can print for the front of your card. And now we'll do the same for the back side. We'll hide the front layer, reveal the back layer, and go to File, Save As, choose the TIFF format, uncheck the Layers box, and we'll save it as Card Back. And now if we take a look at our 
image assets folder you can see that we've got a card back and a card front that we can upload and check it to see if it will print properly you'll want to ensure that none of your text is getting cut off by the bleed or any of the boundary guides that they have set up for you and if they are let's say for instance maybe some of this info like this info up here is too close to the edge you can just move it adjust it down using your arrow keys on your keyboard and we could do the same thing with the email down here at the bottom and just kind of scoot things around to get it looking the way you want i recommend printing a test batch of cards you know print a few don't order like 2,000 cards because if there's something wrong with them maybe the the font you chose isn't readable or the colors didn't turn out the way you wanted to or something got cut off even though you didn't think it would it's always good to do test prints first that way if something's messed up you can fix it and then when it's finally looking the way you want it to print wise then you can print a whole bunch of them regarding fonts 99 percent of the time i think i just use myriad pro i like sans serif fonts for text that needs to be readable sans serif is the type of font that doesn't have a bunch of fancy embellishments on it like for instance georgia if we use that See how at the ends of all of these uh, letters, there's these little hooks and all these little extra little bits. Those are called serifs. And they make the font possibly harder to read even though they make the font look nicer. Some fonts have serifs that are still readable, but I, for the most part, feel that it's just better to have the font be as readable as possible, especially if it's gonna be small. So I just go with something like Myriad Pro. You could also use Verdana or Tahoma or Arial. Any of those fonts are all pretty much the same. But I don't recommend using something really, really wacky for all of your text because it might look cool, but people aren't going to be able to read it and people are just going to throw your card away if they can't read it and get any useful information out of it. As far as paper goes, be careful what kind of paper you print on because if you print on a colored paper or a natural paper, it might change the colors of some of your artwork when it blends with the paper color. And you also have to watch out for those white backgrounds. If there's a little white background around some of your image, you're gonna have to watch out for that because it might end up printing. So sometimes it's just easier just to work with a white background because of that. So there you go. Now you can make your own business cards. If you found this video helpful, it'd be cool if you could click the like button and share the video, and then that way it'll make it easier for other people to be able to find this information. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.